Miami's the mecca for power boating. It always was. Phenomenal boating 365 days a year. Technology's taking the, the boats and the speeds to ridiculous numbers. You know, everybody wants a boat, everybody wants to be on the water. It's the boating capital. We're on the bow of a Lamborghini-inspired Raging Bull in Miami, Florida, the offshore powerboat capital of the world. All right, here we go. That's 100, 110, 120, 130. These million dollar performance machines are built for offshore racing, drug smuggling, and sandbar partying. We came here on a mission to learn about the technology and culture surrounding this insistence to travel as fast as possible on water. This is a 38 foot cigarette, yep. pair of 750 horse uh, Mercury engines, and uh, this boat should be capable of doing over 110 miles an hour plus. Larry Goldman has been inside this evolving world solidifying his place in the Powerboat Hall of Fame as a stunt driver for Miami Vice. Been a boat racer since the early 80s. Won national and world championship titles. Um, so I've been gener you know, generally racing for over 25 years. After the 80s, Larry transitioned into the boat manufacturing industry and has since become a South Beach mainstay, selling brightly colored million dollar boats to everyone from retired Jersey doctors to playboy Russian mega rich. What is it about Miami that made it the Mecca? I mean, Miami still today is the Mecca. Power boating originated from the people that, that ran these boats for smuggling operations. The drug dealers were out here literally just running to the Bahamas and back. The islands being 53 miles away, they were doing it in boats that can get there. So the object was getting there and getting there fast. And that's how it all evolved. And from there, boats became faster and faster and faster. Just a few years later, Miami's glitzy lawlessness penetrated pop culture to the delight of millions of viewers. Miami Vice did a lot for South Beach because it showed the flair and the colors and the architecture and, and the whole lifestyle. One of the episodes, The Great McCarthy is still today very popular memory of the past of Miami Vice. Its portrayal of go-fast boats brought a new image to the scene. Clean-cut, well-to-dos like lawyers and bankers could get behind the wheel of a go-fast boat and feel like a badass. As Miami became a playground for the rich, the speedboating world found itself flooded with cash. The result was a nautical craft as technologically advanced as it was ostentatious. Without the limitations of money, boat builders began reaching new heights of performance. Today, I'm running boats with over 3,000 horsepower. How fast is the fastest boat in here? Uh, I would say the fastest boat in here is a Lamborghini Marine Technology boat at probably 165 miles an hour. Did you work with Lamborghini on it? Or? Yeah, they actually gave us an authorization and everything. Yeah. They were involved, they, were, they proofread all the, the drawings, they actually sent us a lot of the parts. Those are authentic mirrors from Lambo. Everything is the same as its land-based counterpart, save for the motor designed specifically for the water. The engines in this boat alone are about $300,000. That's an oil sump tank, yeah. almost like you see on a dragster, yeah. where the oil's not in the motor, but it's in the tank. And then the motor takes the oil and it lubricates the motor as it needs it and keeps cycling it back into the tank. This is working off the exhaust, okay, but we still need ventilation to keep this compartment cool. This is where the intake is to bring air in. We're keeping the motor area cool here and making sure the ventilation goes around, okay, and, and gets the exhaust out the back. The gold man sensed I was itching to take this creature out into its natural habitat. So we headed to the bay where he apprehensively offered me the driver's seat. Here we go. But when I, if I reach for that wheel, what are you doing? I'm letting go. Oh, no, don't let go like that. Loosen Just up, loosen, loosen, up, loosen, loosen up. up. And then I'm gonna go like that and you're gonna grab it again. Okay. Just don't over it. If I grab it and you tighten up, I'm yep. gonna go like this. Okay. Okay? Yep. And I might do it a little harder than that. I understand. Larry's gonna slap me if I rock off. <laughs> Relax. Okay? All right, here we go. Straight. Nope. No quick moves. 
left, and now you're racing. All right, we're racing. All right. <laughs> One of the most popular contemporary power boats is the center console. Massive and fast, this species is a product of a new generation of boat lovers, those who combine speed with good old stationary partying. To gain a closer look at the technology behind the center console, we met with young boat builder Mike Aragon of Full Throttle Marine. We're at Full Throttle Marine in Miami, and we've been doing it for about nine years. There's, there's many different ways to approach a situation on a motor, on an electrical problem. You know, today a boat runs good, tomorrow you, you might have an issue. You know, it's... They're, they're, they're finicky machines. Very finicky. Are you looking towards things that have been done in the past, or are you constantly looking towards what you can do in the future from an it's, innovation standpoint? It's changed a lot. Technology has taken the, the boats and the speeds to ridiculous numbers nowadays. Uh, the way you set up a boat is totally different. Props, engine heights, setbacks, it's all computerized. We can plug up to the motor, we can actually plug up to the rigging if there's a rigging problem, and it'll tell you everything. It's like, if you don't have a boat in Miami, it's like you're carless. There's so much access, there's so much water everywhere. Mike offered to take us out on the water so we could experience the center console design in action. And like that, we found ourselves floating in the center of a Miami Easter weekend party in all its glory. This is the other side. Uh, we've been studying production this entire time. Now we're moving to consumption. Uh, we're now aboard the SS Young Money with a bunch of young money people who are pa all park their boats here in Key Biscayne Bay. Uh, the idea is basically pull up, drink a bunch of Bud Light, hang out, and enjoy your Easter weekend or die trying. The constellation of folks we met helped articulate why Miami's role as the home for this eccentric form of speed is entirely inevitable. 30 years into the future, what do you see? I keep thinking how many more motors they're going to put and how bigger the center councils are getting. Nine years ago, you had one or two motors, and nine years later, you got guys with four or five motors, 60-foot boats, 57-foot center councils. There's speed records now of 245 miles an hour. It gets to the point that what's too fast? So I don't know where that's going to end, but I think the capabilities of going faster and faster is going to keep going. There is no denying that this town's love affair with powerboats will keep on careening on into the future.